Hey, Jonathan here, Colfax Math. I'm just going to do a quick overview of imaginary numbers. Um, this is a good video to watch right before the SAT or any standardized math exam. They always throw imaginary numbers in there. They're actually pretty easy to understand and just a little bit of review probably go pretty far on a standardized math test. But it, <coughs> they, they include them a lot because they're a big idea. So that lowercase cursive i stands for imaginary. It is equal to the square root of negative one. Um, and the reason why it's imaginary is what you're saying is what times itself equals negative one. So there isn't anything that times itself is equal to negative one. So it, it's kind of one of those math things that's really more about a big idea than a lot of mechanics. Um, so that's what square root of negative one is equal to is i, and that really allows you to simplify a lot of negative square root. So let's say if I had negative square root of 25, before we would just put that as the empty set, but it actually does have a solution, it's just an imaginary solution. So the square root of negative 25 is the square root of 25 times the square root of negative one. Square root of 25 is equal to five and square root of negative one is i. So you could simplify the radical by using that i. Um, here's another problem that's kind of common. Let's say I have five plus three i times another two plus i. I'm gonna foil out that quantity. The so first term would be 10. First outer would be five i inner would be 6i, and last would be 3i squared. i squared, so let's see, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Oops. i squared would be this thing squared, so the square and square root would cancel themselves, so i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, so I have i squared equals negative one. I could replace that i squared there with a negative one. So I have 10 plus five i plus six i, 11 i, three plus three times i squared. So this is a negative three. Negative three and 10 is seven plus 11i. So if you're asked to multiply these two things together, the solution would be seven plus 11i. And then the third way you might see it is going back over here. So again, i to the first is equal to square root of negative one. i squared is equal to negative one. I know anything to the zero power is equal to one, so i to the zero is equal to one. Let's keep going with this. i to the third would be equal to i squared times i to the first. So that would be equal to negative one times i. So this is negative i, All right? i to the fourth would be the same thing as i squared times i squared, right? Same basis, add the exponents i to the fourth. i squared is negative one. i squared is negative one. So I'd have negative one times negative one, or one. i to the fifth would be equal to i to the first times i to the fourth, right? i to the first is just i i to the fourth is one, so i to the fifth is one i, which is just equal to i. You start to see a pattern here. i to the sixth would be i squared times i to the fourth. i to the sixth would be i squared negative one times i to the fourth one, or just negative one, the same as i squared. I'll just keep going. i to the seventh would be i to the third times i to the fourth. i to the third is negative i 
times i to the fourth, which is one, or just negative i. So I could see that <coughs> i to the third and i to the seventh are the same. i squared, i to the second, i to the sixth are the same. i to the first and i to the fifth are the same. i to the zero and i to the fourth are the same. So I could see this thing repeats itself every four times. One, two, yep. So i to the eighth would be i to the fourth, right, times i to the fourth. So it would be i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which is one times one, which is just equal to one, which is the same thing as i to the zero, i to the fourth, i to the eighth, i to the twelfth, so now that you know that pattern, that it repeats itself every four times, um, you could use that quite a bit. So this is a quick overview of imaginary numbers. Um, again, they use them a lot on the SAT, so a great review to do right before um, you take any standardized math exam. So hopefully that helps explaining imaginary numbers. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments down below, and uh, subscribe for Colfax Math. Thanks for watching.